Hey guys, Mrs. Gore. So on to chapter four, um, another really hard chapter to read because this is where we get our first mass amount of violence. Um, obviously, we've we've seen violence. I mean, we we're reading a book where people are being burned in a crematorium. However, now we see Ellie and his dad going through this violence themselves and being victimized even more so than we've already seen. So <clears throat> we left off at the end of chapter three with Ellie and his dad being transported to Buna, and now they're there. They're in Buna. Um, when they arrive, they're given some pretty positive messages from the other prisoners. They say one can hold their own here. The work's not too bad. Um, and then they're sent to the dentist and the doctor the next day for checkups to make sure they're healthy. Obviously, that's key because they know if they fail any of that, that they would be sent to the crematorium. Um, and Ellie is told that he's going to have a tooth pulled because he has a gold crown. And remember, Jews cannot own gold. That includes teeth. Um, but he escapes getting it pulled by the dentist. He says that he has a fever. So he comes back in a week and he says he still doesn't feel good. Um, and then the dentist is actually removed because they find out that he was keeping gold for himself. So he's killed. Um, and Ellie avoids having to have that tooth pulled. Um, time at Buna is spent mainly marching, so they march to musicians who are playing um, music, and they do roll call all the time. Um, as Ellie and his dad are doing this marching to the orchestra, he meets some friends. He meets Juliet, who's a young Polish uh, musician, and then he meets Yossi and Tibby. They are two brothers whose parents um, were both victims of the Holocaust who have died already, um, so they're very united together. And Ellie clings to them. Um, they're around his age, so I think it's nice for him to see some peers his age finally. Um, and because of them, they tell him that he wants to get into the electric warehouse to work, that it's a good commando. Um, and he and his father are able to land a position there because Ellie is considered more fit, more prime. Um, and he insists on being with his dad. So they end up working in the electric warehouse for this. Um, so we have a lot of new characters in chapter four. Um, Franick is their foreman at the electrical warehouse. So he's the one in charge of them and their work. He's overall a fairly decent guy. Um, but then we have Idik, that is the, one of the capos and he's a rough man. Um, he loses his temper very easily. Um, and we see he ends up beating Ellie extremely one day he just loses his temper um attacks him um and there's this young french prisoner a female and she ends up speaking to ellie she uh tries to comfort him and she risks herself because they should not be speaking german and she does um and ellie we saw actually met her later in life um to me i i have goosebumps right now saying this to you um I can't imagine that interaction for years later, he says, runs into her in Paris, um, that they both survived and to, to have that moment together. I just, I can't imagine what that would have been like emotionally. Um, unfortunately, Ellie's dad is also beat um, by Idek. He beats him with an iron bar one day. Same thing, he's frustrated with his work. His dad's not very good at marching. Um, remember, he's older, he's never done any of these jobs. <clears throat> he's never been a laborer. Um, and people realize that this is Ellie's weakness, his father. His father holds him back in a sense because he's older, he's slower. Um, and Franick decides he wants Ellie's gold tooth and Ellie tells him no. And so he continues to beat his dad, Franick does. Anytime they're marching, anytime he has a chance, he's just beating his dad. So Ellie tries to practice marching with his dad and all of the prisoners and capo are making fun of him and it really doesn't help at all. His dad's just not a military guy, it's not in his skill set. Um, so he agrees finally to give Franick his tooth and a piece of bread. He's um, hired or raised the um, trade there, so he's got to give him some bread too. And he does it with a rusty spoon. He pulls, uh, has Ellie's gold tooth pulled out. And then a couple days later, he is actually transported out of the camp. Um, so unfortunately, though, that is not the end of the bad events that happened to Ellie in this chapter. Um, there's a Saturday where they're not supposed to be working, and for uh, an unknown reason to the prisoner, Idik says, you're going to go to the electric warehouse and work. I'm going to be over here. Leave me alone. Ellie catches Idik with a young girl, um, and he starts laughing, um, and he says he's frozen in his feet. He can't move. He's just standing there laughing, and he knows that this is going to be bad. So later that evening, 
Um, Idak pulls out a crate and has Ellie lay on it, and he lashes him 25 times. Um, he faints. He loses consciousness. Um, it's very rough. It's very hard to read. Unfortunately, it's a little worse from there. Um, obviously, Ellie's, I mean, for lack of a better word, fine. He's not, he doesn't die or anything like that. He's obviously not going to be given medical attention. Um, but a big part of Chapter 4 is that the Nazis, the SS, they are hanging other prisoners in front of the prisoners. And like I said, this is to instill that fear. That was a big part of Hitler's reign is fear. So showing them we're not kidding um, and showing them you'll have a slow, painful death. You will hang in front of everyone and everyone will see you die. So um, the prisoners have become really desensitized, as Ellie included. There's a day where they're watching a hanging and Juliet's behind him saying, I just I hope this is over soon so we can eat. Um, and it shows just how normalized this has become to them. And it's it's hard to grasp because we know he's only been here a couple weeks um, and he's already desensitized to watching people hang to death in front of him. Um, but there's one hanging that affects everybody. The young Pipel He's a very young boy. Um, he was accused of stealing weapons and hiding them, and so they hang him. Um, and he's so light and so small that he doesn't even die. It takes him uh, hours to finally die, and the prisoners all have to walk past the body and stare him in the eye. Um, and the prisoner behind Ellie is screaming, where's God? Where is he? Where is he? Um, and Ellie says he's hanging in the gallows, meaning he's dead, he's gone. Um, and that moment, I mean, that just crushes you to know that he's gone from this 12 year olds who wanted to study and devour these religious texts and praise God um, and now he thinks God is dead God doesn't exist um, and before that that's the ending of our chapter um, we also had a moment I'm sorry I forgot of the air raids there's bombing by the United States and they're all so excited um, we have another unknown prisoner to us who tries to steal soup during and he's shot and killed. But other than that, none of the prisoners um, are harmed during the bombings. Um, they are all safe, um, but they're very excited. And that does give them kind of some hope um, in terms of thinking maybe this is almost over. Um, and that is chapter four. I know it's a lot. I know it's really graphic and it's hard emotionally. So take some time to digest it. It's always a good chapter to come back to because like I said, it's um, a lot of firsts for Ellie and his dad. And it's when we really see him, I think, becoming desensitized to everything. So keep your eyes on that. Focus on identity, like I said. Um, and then I'll see you guys for chapter five. Thanks, guys.